back, Shaliners. Today I want to address a topic that I would never have thought you guys wanted to hear about, but you have because I got it in the comment section again and again and again and again and again, which is love lessons from Leo DiCaprio and George Clooney. Like, not them together because they're not together. You know why? Because they're not gay, guys. They're, they're not gay. I made out with one of them. I'm not going to tell you who. You got a 50-50 shot. But like, regardless of that, like, they're not homosexuals. And it's, I've said this before, like, I always think it's funny how, like, Hollywood gay mafia only claims, like, the hot in-demand people. They're not, like, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> you know, it's, it's never that. I mean, Morgan Freeman's dope, but, you know, no one's, like, fighting for him to be on their team. So, yeah, we're going to learn today some love lessons about Leo and George sort of dismantle their love lives and their pathology and most importantly figure out what you can learn from their love lives and how they've gone and you know and apply that to your own life. But first just want to remind you guys that if you have a love question of your own and want to talk privately find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to be connected right away and unless I'm sleeping I will chit chat with you like within 15 minutes. It's great. Also follow me on social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at ShallonXO. All right, so George and Leo. So what do these two dudes have in common? Basically, they run through like all the pussy in Hollywood, right? Like I love Leo because he is so just like, oh, I almost knocked over my liquor. You know, I gotta have one. He's just so like unabashedly like, this is who I am. I'm the guy who calls Victoria's Secret and is like, send me five more. Like, you got to respect a guy like that because he is out there like truly not only living his best life, everyone else's best life. Can I tell you a story I heard about him? And this is true because like I used to run a celebrity magazine for like a lot of years. I'm still very much in that world. So we heard a lot of stories that never even made it to print. Um, but one of them, and this was like, I think it was our photo editor's friend. Like, so this was a direct connection. She was like a model in LA and she slept with Leo and she said she was on top, like having sex with him and he was vaping. Like, he was vaping right the whole time. And then halfway through, he reaches over and grabs his like Beats by Dre headphones, puts them on, like puts on like Diplo or EDM. And he's like, takes a long drag of his vape and he's like, okay, keep going. And she was just like, like she didn't even know what to do. She was so like horrified and like humiliated, but also like, well, I am fucking Leo DiCaprio. And I was like, well played, sir. Because if guys could act however they wanted, wouldn't they kind of act like that? Some version of that. You know what, Leo? I'm not saying I do any different. Sometimes I want to put on my Beats by Dre headphones and just tune out whoever it is I'm having sex with. And George Clooney has lived kind of the same kind of life. I feel like George has been a little bit more controlled and refined. Like he has more sort of elegance about him. And that's why people love him. He is so charming, so easygoing. Just that, that easy charisma that Cary Grant, I don't even really know who Cary Grant is, but I feel like this is how people describe Cary Grant. So what do these two dudes have in common, right? Pussy. Like they have been confirmed bachelors. Like everyone's like, when are they gonna marry? And then it's like one day, boom, George meets them all. And it's like the curtain on bachelorhood shuts and he's a family man. And Leo, here's another interesting story that I heard. Do you guys know who Simon Rex is? He was like an MTV VJ, I think in like the 2000s. And I remember like I was young, but like he was on TV and he was gorgeous. Like, do you know how Ashton Kutcher used to look like, I guess he still does, but like the what happens in Vegas years where, I mean, I'm sorry, you can think Ashton is a douche, but he is a gorgeous man. He is. He, he's a beautiful man. And like Simon Rex kind of looked like him. And Simon ran in that whole crowd of like Leo and all these people. And he told this story that Leo one time was sitting down with Charlie Sheen. I know. And this is before Charlie Sheen like completely imploded. And Charlie Sheen was kind of like the pre-Leo. Like before he was like, had a scabby penis and was like fucking prostitutes and got himself AIDS and did like every drug. He was like, you know, the bad boy. And then, but he like was sleeping with everyone in Hollywood. And then he 
met a wife and settled down. I guess, who was it? Denise Richards? I feel like he's been married a bunch of gross. And so Charlie Sheen was giving DiCaprio kind of a pep talk. And Leo was like, how do you know when it's time to settle down? And Charlie's like, listen, you fuck everyone. I mean, everyone you can. Men too, if you want. Just fuck around. Like change them up, different models, hotter chicks, younger chicks, whatever. And then, but when you're 40, just cut it off. The next girl you meet, make sure she's a nice girl, not the hottest girl, but a nice girl. And you marry her and you have kids with her. That's how it's got to go. And Leo was listening and he says in his very like Leo way, he's like, I was thinking 50. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. And herein comes the lesson we can take from this. Guys have to set their intention to settle down. I've said this to you guys in other videos, and I've certainly said this to you individually, because this is a fundamental difference between men and women. Women are sort of like a bowl of water. No matter how small that bowl is, no matter how full it is, there's always room for a finger to put in that bowl. You know, you put something in a bowl of water, it's going to make room for it. Women no matter how focused we are on our career, on our friends, on our family, whatever, we are always on some level receptive to finding love. You know, we're willing to make room for that. It is very, very rare that you meet a woman who is completely closed off to this. And I mean, I personally never have, maybe, maybe you guys are, but I'm like, I'm pretty damn career driven. I've accomplished a lot, okay? Like, so if I'm gonna make room living in New York, I'm the editor in chief of something, two time published author, got a thriving YouTube channel. If I can fit it in, most people can fit it in. So we're willing to modify and adapt. We're empathetic creatures, we're bonders. You know, we like that. We're pack animals and we're the leaders of packs. Guys, on the other hand, guys are more like a brick wall. You can't just poke your little finger in a brick wall. You wanna get into a brick wall, it's gonna take some effort. It's going to take deliberateness. It's going to take someone chiseling out a brick, wedging it out, and there goes your finger. So women are fluid, women are adaptive. I mean, even sexually, like girls kiss girls, we can dress like boys, we can do whatever. We have more fluidity to us. Maybe that's society allowing us that fluidity, but a lot of it comes from within. Men are a lot more rigid. Guys see things in black and white. You know what I mean? She's the kind of girl you fuck, she's the kind of girl you take home to mom. I like this, I don't like that. Chicken fingers, not us cargo. You know, they're guys, like they're simple and that's what we love about them and they love our fluidity and this is why the two sexes blend, it's the yin and the yang. But I have heard so many questions from you guys where it's like, we love each other. Like, why won't he just commit to me? Why? Or worse, ugh, worse is the when Harry met Sally situation. Have you guys seen that movie? I feel like I'm referencing like many different movies or pop culture things today, but it's applicable. So in When Harry Met Sally, truly one of the greatest movies, Sally's like having this meltdown because she was with her ex for a long time. They lived together and then they broke up. And when she broke up, she was like very healthy about it. And she's like, you know what? We just didn't want different things. Like he didn't want to get married. I do. I said, okay, you know, he's going this way. I'm going that way. No hard feelings. And then a few months later, she hears that her ex is engaged to his secretary. And she's like melting down her floral bathrobe. And she says something so, so right on that so many of us have felt. She's like, it's not that he didn't want to get married. He didn't want to get married to me. And Harry's like, oh. And then he like fucks her and takes, you know, like capitalizes, but it works out for them. But like, yeah, it's like, a guy is like ambivalent about commitment and you're like, where's this going? We like each other and why can't we just do more of liking each other? If you like hooking up with me once, why can we not hook up many times? Like, why is this so difficult for you? And it gets us so twisted up. And then we like finally break it off. We finally manage to separate and leave this fuck boy behind. And then a year later, homeboy's engaged or he's living with some girl and her name is probably Meredith and she's got long flat hair and a long flat ass and she probably doesn't give blowjobs and it's missionary position sex as far as the eye can see and you're just like what the fuck what the fuck I get it 
this is not something like that has only happened to you. I promise you. And you know when it probably happened to you? 26 to 29, right? <laughs> Beware if it hasn't. Because, and I realize this, and this is kind of the DiCaprio situation. It's not that around 26 or 29, girls start to bloom and suddenly we're interesting and suddenly we're cool and suddenly we're marryable. Who you are at 28, it's probably pretty close to who you were at 24. I mean, yes, of course you've advanced and you know, you've developed and stuff, but it's like more or less. It's not that girls have just like reached this like marriageable point. It's like, oh, and now guys see our value. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's that they've sort of decided, okay, I've carved that brick out and I pulled it out and there's an open slot for you. There's even like memes about this. It's like, oh, I'm so glad you found your soulmate. It's the next person you dated at the ages like 26 to 28 because this is how it goes. Guys have to set their intention. I'm not going to speculate about what makes a guy set his intention because I know a lot about this stuff and like this is one of the things that eludes even me. It can be a combination of things. I think guys will set their intention to settle down simply because, you know, unlike DiCaprio, like guys run out of options sooner. When you're a DiCaprio, you run out of options, yeah, maybe around 50. That's when you sort of get like creepy and old and like 21 year olds don't really want to fuck you with the same kind of tenacity. But when you're like, 27, maybe you're getting a little baldy, a little paunch. You have more hair on your forearms than on the top of your head. I don't know. It happens to some people, not everyone. It could be that that's the age your parents married. That's a really powerful thing for guys that we underestimate. Like they have a scary age. Like for women, a lot of times our scary age is the age our moms had us. Guys have that too. And it's, it could be all over the place. It could be like the age, you know, their parents divorced or got married. It could be a lot of family pressure where it's mom and dad being like, okay, all right, you've been in New York for four years. You've like run through everyone at Grand Electrica. You got to settle down, right? You're going to go work your dad's hedge fund, probably going to move back to Westport in the next three years. So cowboy up, like pick and let's get on with the second half of your life. It could also just be like a leap in maturity. I've always said that 26 is peak douche, peak douche, worst ever. My boyfriend's, he's, he's getting there. He'll be there in a little bit. And I'm worried because at 26, you've made kind of like a lot of quantum leaps. You are probably making more money than you ever have. Like, you know, you've gotten out of that entry level salary, entry level position. You've leveled up. Maybe you've got an office instead of a cubicle. Maybe not. Like, I mean, I didn't get an office until I was very old. So if you haven't, don't even worry about it. You're maybe living on your own. You know, you might have separated from the roommate thing. You fully left college behind. Statistically, it takes two years to really get over college. It does. And that's like, that. it took me that long and I didn't even really like college. I can't imagine if I went to like a big tent, I was a big man on campus. Like that could be, that could take a while. So 26 is like sort of like a big separation from who you were when you were younger. And that is when guys become insufferable. They just know it all. They know everything. I date white males pretty much, not exclusively, but like this is when they go like full MAGA. This is kind of when it happens. So that's like a good way to weed people out. But even if they don't go that direction, they can be a little big for their britches. But they can also step into a second realm of their life where they're like, all right, you know, I'm ready to like think about actually having a girlfriend. One of the, this guy I used to hook up with, God, he's the worst, like actively the worst. He has the face of an angel. I mean, an angel. Someone should carve him onto the Sistine Chapel and he is a demon inside. He, Tucker, hi, are you watching this? You're a monster. But he like never had a girlfriend because he's like, my girlfriend hurt me in college. He's like, you're like 24, grow the fuck up. Oh, you've been hurt? Like, can you picture the retarded SpongeBob meme? I've been hurt by a girl. Cool, I've been hurt by guys since I was like seven, like cowboy up, you know? But like, it was around 26 that he's like, left that behind and decided to get a girlfriend. Thank God it wasn't me, I don't need that kind of headache. But what I'm saying is, 
there's a shift that occurs. So when you look at someone like Leo DiCaprio, you realize he has like the brick wall is intact. Like he has blocked off the idea of settling down and that, that is not a bowl of water. You know, there are no little fingers. <laughs> Sorry, gay mafia. No little fingers going anywhere inside Leo DiCaprio. And same with Clooney. Like he was just not of that mindset. And I, you know where it stems from probably? Guys don't have to choose. There's no time limit. Clock ain't ticking. They don't have eggs that are going bad. They just got a bunch of sperm and they're gonna do whatever they want with it. They're gonna shoot it here. They're gonna shoot it there. All over Paris Fashion Week, on that yacht over there, whatever. There's no exigency. Women, it's very different. Let me go off on a sidebar here. I do not subscribe to the fertility holocaust that has been foisted upon American women. This like, aren't you, don't you want to freeze your eggs? No one ever freeze my fucking eggs. I don't want someone in there harvesting my eggs and scooping them out. Do you know how deeply unnatural that is? I believe that the thing that keeps women from getting pregnant is stress about not being able to get pregnant. When you're stressed, your body doesn't know where it's coming from, right? Like think about when you're really tired. What's the last thing you want to do when you're tired and you're stressed and you're just like, Ugh probably have sex. I don't want someone touching me. When you're tired or when you're stressed, your sex drive, first thing that goes, first thing that your body shuts down. Why? Because your body, again, doesn't know where the stress is coming from. Is it coming from your brain? Is it coming from an invading clan? Is it coming from a famine? It doesn't know. It just knows that whatever's going on, you can't deal with it because you're all gassed up and you're full of cortisol, which your brain is injecting into your body, the stress hormone, which is literally poison. That is where cancer comes from. So it knows, hey, you can't take care of yourself. You can't get to this life. <laughs> You're not having a baby. Okay. You are not fit to reproduce, not happening. So the more people stress about it, it just, it's this terrible cycle that takes effect. And you hear all the time. I mean, at least I do because I'm of like birthing age. Girls who are like, you know what? We did three rounds of IVF. Also, unnatural and so hard on your body. And then we just gave up. We we're like, whatever. Three months later, I got pregnant. Exactly. You let it go. You let go of that stress and you let your body do what it is meant to do. But I digress. Boys don't have that stress. So if I didn't, if I knew that I could have a baby into my fifties, sixties, seventies, if I really wanted to, you know, <laughs> I would just be getting ramped up in my sexual career. Honestly, I would be like, oh, let's limber up. It's another Saturday night. Let's go out. Let's do this. Going to Costco, getting some Magnums, be back later for the next palette. Of, <laughs> like, just let's go. So if you would look at it like that, like look at the guy who you're after that you're targeting and think how, how elastic are his options, you know? If he's a rich guy, a powerful guy, maybe a guy who's been married before already has a kid, he doesn't need to settle down yet. The clock isn't ticking. And what we need to take into our real life relationship is the idea that if someone is a brick wall, we can't be that jackhammer. Why do we need to be? Why do we need to try to like bash through someone's reality to get to the other side where hopefully they're it's going to align with our reality. You know what that sounds like? A lot of goddamn work. And you know what I am? Tired. You know why I'm tired? Because I'm an achiever. I'm into acquisition and I'm into achievement. So I'm going to use my precious time on me. Not to be a jackhammer on a fuckboy, because the world is full of guys who already have that brick missing from their wall. They've got a blank space. Let's fill it up. Mm-hmm right? Like I always say, I feel like I've gone saying this in every single video. There's 8.4, maybe 7.6, whatever, billion people in this world. Please don't tell yourself ever, ever that this one guy is the only one you're compatible with. I live in New York City, right? Say I'm going shopping for a dress. I find a dress. It's hideous. It doesn't fit. It makes me feel awful. And instead of being like, hey, Hey, there's probably more dresses in New York City, you know? Maybe I'm just gonna go 
try some other ones on. And if I don't find a dress today, know that I won't go naked for the rest of my life. There will be more dresses. No, 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 we're not doing that. We are making this dress work. We're gonna dislocate our shoulder trying to get into it. We're gonna feel like a muffin while we're in it. It's gonna be horrible, but we're gonna buy it. Why? Because we don't believe there are other dresses. What? Like, that's crazy. And I got news for you. There's more men in New York City than there are dress shops. I've looked. And I've, I can go out and find a dude a lot easier than I can go out and find a dress that I love for a gala. You know what I mean? Well, maybe that's not true. I see some great stuff from BCBG this season. My point is, don't try to fit what isn't working, like, onto your life. Whatever you want is fine. Whatever you want is normal. You shouldn't have to apologize for it. You shouldn't have to damp it down or dilute it or try to fit your dream into someone else's. Why? Why? Marriage and pairing is logistics. A quote I love from Antoine Saint-Exupéry, I think, Exupéry. He's the one who wrote Little Prince. One of my favorite quotes. Love is not looking at each other. Love is looking out at the world in the same direction. Yes, you have to be on the same page. DiCaprio has decided not even to open his book. Like, think about it. If this man didn't want to mate and settle down with Giselle, Blake Lively, literally every woman who's ever struck down the Victoria's Secret runway, it's not them. It's him. So look at your own life and be like, do I see DiCaprio as patterns here? You know, am I going for guys who are a brick wall? I'm the bowl of water and I shouldn't have to splash myself all over the place to try to get through the wall he's built. We can just enjoy, enjoy each other and have fun, but know that our pages, you know, we're not aligned. Our goals aren't aligned. So move on with love. And ironically, like when you don't try to hold on to something and like make it work, this is make it work is such a red flag phrase to me. Whenever I've said that about my own relationships, I was already sunk, you know? It shouldn't be like work. It's like, yeah, relationships are work the way like friendships are work. You know, you gotta stay in touch, meet up with someone when they have a broken heart, but you're not like, it's work. Like it's not labor, it's not that. So when you can release someone and be like, you know what? I get that the timing's not right. Timing truly, truly is everything. And the more I've tried to hold on to things and engineer them in my life, instead of letting go and letting God and letting flow, the worse off I've been. So when you can release a guy, you're like, time's not right for us. He's going to file that away. And he's going to come back to you maybe when that brick is out. And when he's like, you know, who did I love? Who was great? Shallon. Not Meredith. Take your lank ass hair and go back to boarding school, Mare. We don't need you here. For more, click like and subscribe. And like I said, if you have a question of your own, find me on the Instant Go app at ShallonXO and follow me on show, social at Insta. Nope, at ShallonXO on Insta, Twitter, and Snap. And tell me what other celeb relationship stuff you want to see. Maybe like Cardi B and Offset, anybody else, Chuck and Blair. Ah, anything else from current shows? Let me know. I got you guys. Now go out there and be that fabulous, swishy, swashy bowl of water. Like a good way.